gotta stay left. We had a great night sleep last night in this farm country. We had a great visit with Juan Pablo and all the people of this little town, La Feridia. We're headed to this reserve up here, which was our original destination. It's supposed to have some monos or monkeys that we have not seen yet. So we're pretty excited about that. Okay, we've sort of kind of gotten out of the farm area. We're only about a kilometer in, We've got a couple kilometers more to go. We're going along this river Otun, O-T-U-N, and we're headed to the National Park. Definitely already in the thick of the jungle. So uh, we just saw a little monkey crossing and across the road up high. So we're fingers crossed guys, we're gonna show you some new cool monkeys. I love these low roads less traveled. Yes, they're bumpy. Yes, they're narrow. Yes, a lot of times they have low trees. And but, motorcycles. And motorcycles. <laughs> but they are less traveled and that's typically where we see more of the wildlife and the other cool stuff. Yep. All right, I've had to stop. We're trying to get the big camera out we see a super cool bird Let's that we did not think get out and get him kurt i don't have a good angle and i don't want to move i don't want to move all right he flew right before we could get the big camera on him All right, we are parked inside of the reserve area. Kurt is letting, getting lots of great information from the two men that work here. So I think there's a video we get to watch. Kurt will go on a hike and then we'll see what the rest of the day has to take. All right, so it's almost time for Kurt to go on his hike uh, where he's supposed to see some pretty cool, amazing stuff. It's a place where you have to take a guide, but the hike comes with the entrance to the park. Uh, but before that, we get to watch a cool video, some sort of an educational video. Gotta find one of those. The information on the Hoyer monkeys. Okay, oh, okay. perfect. Please sit down. Gracias. Gracias. Y donde habitan especies de fauna como el mono aullador y la fauna urbana, la cual es exclusiva de Colombia. Este es un lugar. So we started noticing these trees in Colombia. And you can just kind of see them on the mountaintops, just little silver trees. They got these sort of giant, I call them umbrella leaves. They look similar to the sloth trees we've seen before. Yuruma Blanco. But anyway, if you look on the mountains, you can see them up there spread out. They're very pretty. And uh, yeah, now we know what they are. I'm going to explain you the uh, trails. Okay. Up here. Everyone has a different topic because the history of the place. Uh, the first one is the river trail to the side. Okay. This is a combination between the native forest and the introduced forest. Okay. We have here pines, we have Europeans and oaks introduced. Okay. okay. 60 years ago they put them there. Okay, so not native, yep. So we c the trail combines both. Okay. The native one and the... Uh, Are eucalyptus trees native here? No. Okay. We don't have eucalyptus in Colombia. Native, no. Yeah. So this is an interesting one because you can change the, the, the views from the native, the oaks forest and the pines forest. Okay. With the river border. Okay. 
So this is a nice strap. Okay. So these are those endemic guans. And that's a family of them. And so you rarely see these and we're in for such a treat. There's two up in that tree right there. And there's even more around. Wow. The only way to see these birds is to come to Colombia. Look at them. So rare. Is this a baby? Look at that little no. frog. Oh, just jump. Could That's okay. An adult. Exclusive from Andes region. These are exclusive from the Andes region. Yes. And they're the world's smallest frogs. And this is like um, a very special animal because they are adapted to live on the ground. They don't need water like other frogs okay. to make metamorphosis. Okay, yeah. They don't have metamorphosis. They don't. No, this is the exception to So they rule. just they don't have so they're not tadpoles. They, they just hatch no, from the eggs exactly, and they're a frog. Exactly. They pass all the process inside the egg. And uh, when they come out, they are that's what they are. Wow. So Juan just says, I'm I'm just excited about the biodiversity here. And he's like, Welcome to Colombia. <laughs> We're just getting started on this trail. It's absolutely amazing. So the trail is snaked around through an oak forest and along the Atun River. And I believe the Atun River supplies water to Pedit. Pedida? Yeah. Yes. yeah. And another sea, those two islands. And another city. So this is a very important water system and one of the reasons why this is a protected area. All right, we're coming through a mossy, slippery rock section. But this trail's been really well maintained and uh, super nice, super close. We're definitely in the thick of the jungle. I'm glad I have a guide. Sometimes you guys know I like going freestyle, but this has been very educational and really a super good tour so far. So the river's not totally exposed, but every once in a while, we get a nice glimpse and the water's moving pretty fast. And I'm sure it's pretty cold because it's a glacier fed river. That was good. It moved. I like move. Yeah, look. He's climbing. Oh, yeah. You're there. Wow. Okay. So there's another park about seven kilometers beyond the one we were just at. Now, it's a rough, rough road. There's really no, I guess, gatekeeper down here. It's just basically where the road ends in the jungle. And 
snow's freaking out. Well, it's a rough road. Well, the guys at the park we were just at did say the road was worse. They said like 25% worse. They said you can make it. Just go slow, which we're doing. But then it rained. So there's some mud and some deep mud puddles that we can't see the bottom of. So we're kind of driving blind through a few of them and it's scaring me. But there's no room to turn around. The turnaround is at the end of the road. So once we started on this, that was it. We got to get to the end. But there is the hope for something really cool once we got yeah, here. Or we would not be doing yes, it. Yes, this is not just some random drive down some bumpy, to crazy road. No, this is much cooler. So we'll see. Hopefully, Hopefully, cross your fingers, we have some luck. So this right here looks like a tough one, guys. You can see what we're up against. These are the potholes. These are the bumps. These are the washouts. This one's pretty steep. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'd stay to the right. I'd stay to the right, right here. Yep. You want to go up that. You can hear the four-wheel drive pulling. Uh, I would stay to the left on this one, I think. How crazy is this, guys? How are we going to a skinnier road? <laughs> the sign says the road's going to get skinnier. I don't know how that happens. You doing okay, Snow? Uh, well, I'm, I prefer to drive in this kind of situation, guys, because I have a control issue. <laughs> so, But I am stressed a little bit through here just because it's bumpy and we never know what's going to be around the next curve. And she can't see it, but I see a little hill up here. One step at a time. That's how we're doing this road. Another crazy road. Stay on the left here. There's rocks here on the wall. If you guys can see that, we're right against a rock face. So as the van rocks, we just barely miss that rock wall. You see the water coming out here. Stay on the left. Stay on the road ends where these trees are. They're okay. You can't go off the road. I mean, that's not an option. You can go over here a little more. Left, left, left. I can't. Good job. We can't come over here. Do you see why? That's straight yeah, but down. you're about to. Well, it's straight down over here and it's wet, so we're gonna hit stuff over there before we go off the edge. This is a bad section. I'm sorry. The river's right there. So one of the challenges with this road, guys, is there's a steep cliff on the right, straight up rock wall, and then on the left is, you're just gonna have to go through it, hon. And on the left is the river. This is bad, this is real bad. I don't like this road. I don't like this road. So we made it to the end of the road and it's raining right now. So this is the absolute end of this road. The only way to carry on is to walk that way. And that's supposed to be where what we came to see the tapirs are. But there's a little restaurant here and a little business here. So we're going to we're gonna get some food. Yeah, Snow, are you okay from that ride? I'm, I need a neck rub. But I'm okay. <laughs> and hopefully we see this cool guy. We've been looking for him since Costa Rica. So, and he's cool. So hopefully we see him. But right now we're gonna support this little restaurant and get some food. The mighty Tapir Hunter is on the loose. She's got the tripod, the big camera. We have really mustered up a lot of courage to get all the way out here in the middle of the jungle. I would sing with everyone 
voice is like a mountain song Sing you are my only one Oh my, oh my, oh my days Life is wonderful Life is wonderful Never understood But life can So I'm glad Snow's got to come out here in the jungle with me, even though we had to do a bit of a strenuous drive to get here, to say the least. All right, this is the trailhead. I clearly can't go much farther because of my knee. So we're really hoping we get lucky and the tapirs come all the way down. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. We got another little trail we can check out that I can do, but we just got to keep our fingers crossed. If we don't see him this evening though, Kurt will likely go a little deeper into these trails in the morning before we leave here. But maybe we get lucky. Maybe I'll put my headlamp on and go for a little night hike. No, no, he's not doing that because there's giant spiders and pumas and all kinds of crazy stuff. We are deep in the jungle, so I will hide his headlamp. All right, evidence. They do come here. Three toes. Three big toes. And you see all these little wildlife, little trails. I bet they're back in there right now watching us. Sneaky little things. This is a nice little walk up through the boulder garden. <laughs> the mossy boulder garden. So I was thinking maybe we might be able to see them up on this little, in this little opening. And then there's a little stream right up here. So believe it or not guys, the bus comes up here twice a day down that same road that we came down. And that's why we felt so comfortable coming down the road. It was not a good comfortable feeling we had, but if the bus could make it, we could make it. That's what we thought. Now look at this bus, how fun is this? All right, so this bus brings supplies up here. There's a bus driver and a bus helper. And the young guy on top right now, I think he's obviously the helper. He's gonna hand the stuff down. If you live up here, this is how you get your supplies. They've already carried in some groceries. So bamboo is used as lumber up here. So somewhere down in the little village, they're drying it and they've brought some up here sure they're planning on building something with it. They built a lot of stuff with the bamboo. I've had to retire to the van because of my knee. Kurt's gonna give it 10 more minutes. I gotta find these things. He's promised he will not stay out in the pitch dark, but he has his headlamp. So 
Go, Curdy, so you can come back. <laughs> okay, guys. This is my first real night hike. And it's not really a hike. I'm only going to go a few minutes down here and check for, ta for tapirs. I promised Snow I wouldn't be gone very long. But let's be quiet and see if, if we can find anything interesting in the night. Already there's a spider. Look at that thing. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.